Hi, Chris here from Dot Product for the complete out of the box tutorial for the Dot Product DPI-8X or DPI-8X SR handheld 3D scanner. So here we have a brand new unit that just arrived in the mail. We took the case out of the box and now we're going to open it up and go through each of the components inside. So before we get into the hardware, I'd like to go through some of the paper materials that are included with the device. They're very important. First off, you have the DPI Kit Quick Start Guide. This is a very important piece of material that you should review and have everyone who is going to be using the scanner review. It's a concise guide to everything you need to know about using the scanner and some of the different functions that you have. Please hang on to this and refer back to it as a reference. We also have a full length user manual available in PDF format on the tablet or if you need us to send you a copy of that directly, please feel free to contact Dot Product Support for that. Next here we have information on redeeming your included 12 month license of Dot 3D Edit. This is the native Dot Product point cloud editing software that will operate on Android or Windows and one 12 month license is included with your scanner. Please follow these instructions to redeem. Similarly, InfiPoints DP is also pre-installed on your device. This is an Android-based feature extraction tool for dot product data. So this can be found directly on your Android tablet and will automatically extract surfaces and cylinders out of your point cloud data for export in IGIS or DWG format. Please follow these instructions to redeem a free 30-day trial to try it out yourself. Next we have the dot product terms and conditions and user license agreement. Please review this and keep for your own reference. Here we also have some information on the sensor and your calibration information. Please review and keep these for your reference. Next we're going to go through each of the components that come in the kit. So simply we have first our charge kit. So here's a standard AC wall adapter for charging the tablet, your micro USB power cord, and multi-country adapters for that. Next in this pocket here we have three OTG micro USB cables. These are for connecting the tablet to the sensor on your kit. There's three, two are just extra in case anything were to go wrong. Next I'm going to pull out the scanner itself to go through the functionality to get you up and running very quickly. Now here we have the DPI-8X out of its protective carrying case. And before we get into the software and the scanning, I'd like to go through some of the highlights of the brand new design that we've implemented for the DPI-8X and the DPI-8X SR. So here you see it's a complete compact solution. Sensor is built into the device. Tablet slides right in and out with the latch on top. If you want to capture full HD images with the tablet, you can now slide it up via magnets till you see the line here. And then you can take HD pictures utilizing the built-in camera in the NVIDIA Shield and save those directly onto your hard drive to store with your project. But if you're just utilizing for scanning, you can keep it in the down position with the latch engaged. It's now safe to place your scanner face down, stand it straight upright, or place it tablet side down. Any of these are now valid options for temporarily setting the device down on a flat surface. However, you should still always be very careful with the scanner and keep it inside its protective carrying case at all times. It's important to avoid banging the device around at all in order to protect the calibration. Next, I'm gonna attach this OTG cable, which will engage the sensor to the tablet. So it's a pretty straightforward connection here. USB to micro USB. But you always want to be careful when making the connection. Now I'm going to turn my tablet on. And if I open it up, you'll see our three pre-installed applications. 5.3D is the scanning application. Dot3D is the editing app. And InfiPoints DP is your feature extraction tool, all operating natively on Android. 
But before we get into those apps, I'd like to go through a few of the optional add-ons that you have and how you can install those onto your DPI-8X. So first off, while this device does have two handles and can be used as a single-handed or a two-handed tool, we do still have the option of the trigger mount uh, for a standard pistol grip. So if you were to opt in for the handle kit, here are the components that you would receive. Ball joint, two screws, connecting piece, handle with ball joint. So it's a very simple installation procedure. With the two included screws and the pre-existing holes in the scanner. You want to make sure you get that nice and tight as it is a bit heavier than in the past. And now you have that handle kit ready for use with the DPI-8X. However, as I mentioned, this is a completely optional add-on. The standard use of the device will not include the handle kit, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off now. The two other add-on kits that you might have with your device on the hardware side would be the light kit or the pull kit. With the DPI-8X, we are now able to utilize both of those kits at the same time. So you can capture, for example, underground or above ceiling with use of the extension pull kit and light for capture in the dark. First, I'm going to show here how the light kit gets added on very simply. To mount the light kit to your DPI-8X, you want to attach this sticky pad to the device and then screw your new light in to the ball joint. This ball joint will allow for complete flexibility so you can line it up exactly the way you want it. And turn the light on. Next, if you've opted in for the pole extension kit, that will also mount to the DPI-8X very easily. It'll attach the same way that we attached the handle kit earlier, right on the front of the device, allowing you to still have the light kit optionally attached to the top of the scanner. And if I wanted to use that light kit with the pole, that is now not a problem at all. Other than the light kit, the pole kit, there is one very simple addition that you should always bring with you to the job site, and that is April tags and or targets and tape. April tags will automatically improve the accuracy of your scan data every time you loop over each unique target more than once, require no manual measurement, input, or extra effort other than putting them up and strategically looping back over them. We highly recommend you use them whenever possible. Now back to the scanner. So now I'm going to move through each of the applications that we have built into the tablet to show you the functionality that you will be getting out of your DPI-8X handheld scanner. So first I'm going to open up Phi3D and it'll automatically ask you if you want to allow Phi3D to access the USB device. You want to hit OK every time. That's going to grant the sensor access to the tablet for communication into the software. Now you'll notice we do have a warm-up time here. You have a session warm-up of about 20 to 30 seconds between scans. You have a system warm-up of 15 minutes at the beginning of your scan session. The system warm-up you only have to do once. The session warm-up you'll follow every time. So if I were going to be doing a live scan on the job site, I'd power it on, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then I'd start my session. And I wouldn't have to wait any more after that other than about 20 to 30 seconds between scans. For demonstration purposes today, I'm going to go ahead and skip that warm-up time and hit Start Mapping. Now you see I've immediately turned that April tag in the background orange that indicates it's been recognized. Everything else is being turned green and yellow, which is my real-time feedback on the quality of the points I'm collecting. Green is great, yellow is good, and I want to utilize that during my capture 
to make sure I've turned everything that I care about most green or at least yellow. At the end of your scan, you wanna finish back at that same April tag or April tags that you started at. Make sure you turn them orange again and hit finish mapping. Now we have a quick preview of our scan right here on the tablet. If I wanted to go back and add data, I could use the append tab. If I utilized targets in my scan, I'd wanna to go to the targets tab to reference those targets in my data set. Otherwise, my next step is to go to the optimization tab. This global optimization procedure improves the overall quality and accuracy of my scan by leveling the colors, and tightening the frame-to-frame -frame alignment, cleaning up any noise, and other factors to give you your final data set ready for export. So we quickly optimize that scan. And now we want to move to the coordinates tab. I can set an origin point on the floor, set my z-axis straight up, Set my x-axis out of the wall. Now you have an XYZ system that makes sense. If I wanted to take a measurement, I can do it right away based on that coordinate system. So I can get a clearance from floor to pipe. It'll give me not only my point to point distance, but also my X, Y, and Z based on that coordinate system that was just set. Now I want to save my scene, so I'll go File, Save Scene. I'll save that as Demo. I'll indicate that I optimized it with an O, that I set the coordinates with a C. Continue. I will utilize my user-defined coordinate system and hit Save Scene. Now if I hit Send Scene 2, I can take it to Dot3D. I've activated my new license included with the scanner. And this will allow me to perform some quick and easy editing, annotation, and more right on Android or back in the office on the PC. So here's my full screen viewer. I can take some more precise measurements. If I zoom in and tap these measurement points and switch to the point cloud view, that'll show it well. I'm now able to drag from point to point to get a very precise measurement. Next, we have the edit capability where I can crop my data. So let's say all I really cared about here was the pipe. I can quickly and easily crop everything else out. So if I select that area here, then deselect the section of the box that I got, hit invert, and crop. Now that leaves only the information that I care about. I have an even smaller, cleaner file. Next down the line here we have the annotation capability if I want to add notes to my data. For example, tag that April tag. I'll tag it AT. Any detailed information I wanted to add, number one, the exact 3D location, hit OK. And that'll save directly into my compressed DP file. You can also take screenshots to capture strategic information, share directly the DP file or the screenshots, or next we're going to share directly to InfiPoint's DP on the tablet. I want to use the user-defined coordinate system and export the scene. Now the file is opening up in InfiPoint's DP, and within a matter of a few short minutes we have our surfaces and cylinders recognized, extracted, and ready for export to IGIS or DWG format. And that finishes the out-of-the-box tutorial on the Dot Product DPI 8X kit. For more questions, please visit us at dotproduct3d.com and check out many of our other support videos on each of these applications you see here.